Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to my channel or just welcome to my channel if you're new here. I'm Natasha, I'm an artist and illustrator from the UK and I work in a variety of different mediums, or should that be media, including watercolour. I'm quite obsessed with watercolour. I have really got into using it again over the past year or so. I've always used it a little bit, but I'm really, really into it now. And with all the amazing watercolours on the market, I have become quite a collector. I'm a full-time artist. You by no means need this amount of art materials in order to create good artwork, but like some people collect I don't know, handbags or jewellery or shoes or whatever. I like to collect art supplies. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is looking at these gorgeous paints in depth. This is the start of a new series um, based entirely around watercolour. But today we're going to start with the video that I thought would actually be the video I end the series with. But I was so excited to film it that I have decided to do my top 25 favourite watercolours ever. I'm going to swatch them for you today. It's been really, really hard deciding which were my favourites. There's a little bit of a spoiler here because you can see them all written out on this sheet of watercolour paper, but I'm going to talk you through them. I'm going to swatch them all. I'm going to do my pebble swatching, which is kind of a thing that I've got into doing recently, if you've seen any of my previous videos. Um, and yeah, we're just going to look at these colours and we're going to look at why I love them so much. They're not actually colours that you would necessarily put together to make a complete palette. That's not the idea of this exercise. What I really wanted to do was go through all of the watercolours I had and just pick out 25 that I feel are real stand out colours for whatever reason. I told my patrons on Patreon the other day that I was going to be filming this video for YouTube and I've already promised them a high res download of the completed swatch sheet when I've finished. So that will be available on there. Um, it's really useful to have as a reference if you're interested in adding some more watercolours to your own collection. Uh, it's very, very hard online to find really accurate watercolour swatches. Um, what I'll do in the video as well is hold the sheet up to the camera later on when they're dry so that you can see them really clearly and you can get a good idea of how they actually look. But obviously for the swatching, you're at a bit of a distance. So yeah, let's get on with it. Let's start with my first. I mean, these are in no particular order, by the way. It was hard enough choosing my top 25 without um, actually having to put them in order as well. So these are in no particular order. So we're going to start with Daniel Smith Luna Violet. Now, I think this is one that I have. I'm pretty sure I do. Um, I have it in a couple of my palettes, but yes, it's in my main palette. Let's just pop this over here because we haven't got much space because this is quite long. So I'm going to just add a little bit of water to the Luna Violet. Let's just reactivate that. It's always a good idea to just sort of pre-wet the paints to reactivate them if you're working from uh, dried paint in a palette. Sorry, my very holy, <laughs> holy, holy, my very holy, it's not holy, it's holy, <laughs> cardigan is making an appearance again. Okay, right, Daniel Smith Luna Violet. I also should say about these paints, they're not necessarily the ones I would perhaps use the most in my work. They might only be paints that I use now and again, but they are my favourite paints. They're my favourite colours. So that's interesting, isn't it, that they're not necessarily the colours I would use most often. See, it looks incredibly dark when you apply it like that. We need to just get this diluted a little bit because I want you to see how it granulates. It's such a lovely colour. If you love dark 
moody colours, you're going to love this colour. So as I said, I'm going to be swatching in this kind of pebble swatching style. So I'm going to try and make it darker this end <laughs> and then it's a little bit more diluted the other end. I kind of like to make these pebbles as neat as possible but we might be slightly limited by time so I can't fiddle too much. So we might just leave that think like that. That looks pretty good. You can already see how this granulates. It's so pretty. It's like a really dark purplish grey and I just think it's beautiful. I love the way when you add water to it that it um, does this beautiful separation and granulation. Okay so this one is the Schmincke Horridam Tundra Pink. This is one of their super granulating colours. Um, and again, this is a super pretty colour. that you can already see that the pigments in this are separating. Okay the next one is the Schmincke Horridan Potter's Pink. Now I have two different Potter's Pinks. I have the Winder and Newton version and this one. Now I would suggest if you want a Potter's Pink either of those are really nice potter's pinks so I don't actually have a preference some potter's pinks can be really hard to re-wet um, I don't have that problem with mine but I did add a little bit of um, what's it called vegetable glycerin I got mine from Amazon I think um, add that when you're transferring the tube paint to the um, watercolour pan in your palette and you will get the paint that re-wets really well so that seems to have worked for me but I love Potter's Pink because it's just such a natural earthy kind of pink. I'm just going to hold the first three up here so you can see them. All really beautiful granulating colours. I love the texture you can get with these. They granulate really well actually on this type of paper, which is a cold pressed watercolor paper. So cold pressed is sometimes called not. <laughs> um, I don't know whether that's just in the UK, um, but yeah, it's always sort of a lightly textured watercolor paper. The most textured is generally called rough and the smooth is called hot pressed. Um, but yeah, I find they work really well on this kind of paper. So the next one we're going to do is Shire Blue, which is another of the super granulation colours, the Schmincke Horridan ones. So this is in a tube. So what I'm going to do is just squeeze out a little bit into this tiny ceramic palette here. I'm often asked about these palettes, by the way. I got them from Jackson's. They come in a set of six and they're really useful because they don't take up much space on your desk because they stack. This is quite a new color to me, but it's quickly become one of my favorites. I'm really loving the Schmincke Horridam Super Granulation colors. They're just so interesting. There are so many different sets. I'm sure a lot of you will have heard of them, but if you haven't, Google them. <laughs> My favorite sets are Haze, which is a limited edition. Um, we're gonna swatch the Haze pink in a moment. Um, Shire and 
forest. But there are nine sets in total. This is a super interesting colour. You can see like the blue and green separating out there. It's going to make it a little bit heavier in this part. Okay, and the next one is one that I've had in my main palette for a while now. And this is the Schmincke Horridam Forest Blue. You'll see there are a lot of Schmincke Horridam paints actually in this favourites collection. <laughs> so this one is kind of similar to Shire, but not, not the same. They're significantly different enough for me to want both of them. Actually, it looks quite different when you swatch it close to the other one. I'm not going to be able to do such a big swatch of this one, am I? This one's going to be a slightly smaller pebble, I think. Yeah, they are quite different. Actually, they're more different <laughs> than I thought they were going to be. Because in my mind, I always think of the Shire Blue as being a bit like the Forest Blue. But actually, it's quite nice to see that they are quite different. Oh gosh, that is such a beautiful colour. Another really moody looking colour. So the next one might be a bit of a surprise because instead of being either quite earthy or muted and moody, it's a really bright colour. It's the Daniel Smith Cobalt Teal. I love teal as a colour, particularly when it's combined with, say, orange or rust. I think it looks really good um, in combination with that. But it's such a gorgeous colour. Kind of reminds me of the sea in Cornwall. I guess it might be the ocean actually in Cornwall. Um, the ocean. When I went there, it was this amazing turquoise colour. It's tealy turquoise. And whenever I look at this colour, it reminds me of Cornwall now. So yeah, I think it's quite nice to have some brighter ones in here too. So the next one, I'm going to move back over to this side. And this is going to be the Holbein Artists Watercolour Shell Pink. So this you might see as being quite an unusual colour for me. And I guess it is, but I love it in conjunction with greys and blue greys, even these violet colours. I think that this pastel pink just looks so beautiful and it cheers me up whenever I look at it, basically. <laughs> it's just like a happy colour. And I think this is what I like in my work. I like to sometimes mix in a colour that you wouldn't necessarily think would be my kind of colour because I am so known for using these muted darker moodier colours that then you put in a pastel pink and it's quite a nice unexpected surprise I think. So the next one is another pink this is the Royal Talons Rembrandt Dusk Pink so this is a super interesting colour you see just how dark that is but then when we add some water, it will do some really interesting things. <laughs> but it fits really well with this um, selection of violets and pinks. But in this one, the black pigment really separates out. Just need to give it lots of water to do its thing. I just think it's such an unusual, beautiful colour. So, so far, all but one of these have been featured in my main palette. Um, the only one that isn't was the Shire Blue, and that's because I have the sets of these 
and I've just kept them in the tubes and in their little sets because I really like having them as separate sets. So this is part of the Shire set. So that just stays um, separately. I won't be putting those into pans. But the next one we're going to look at is the Daniel Smith Bloodstone, which is a really interesting, um, I would call it a brown, I guess. <laughs> It's certainly in with the browns in my palette, but it has like this really lovely, um, I don't know whether you can tell on screen, but it's like almost like a slightly aubergine kind of tone. At least that's what it looks like to me. And it's kind of interesting because again, it's a really granulating color that I kind of feel is quite, a versatile colour and you can really play around with it and get those pigments moving around. So it looks really good, darker, but also with more water you get this gorgeous granulation. And you can really wash it out and it can become quite pale. It's lovely, it does work really well with these as well. So the next one is a Schmincke Horodam. I believe this is a limited edition colour. So I bought a large tube of this. It's their Ocean Grey. And it is just the most beautiful blue. Now, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to buy this one. I'd heard about it when they released it. And I was like, do I really need another blue like this? And then I saw it swatched out by someone on YouTube. And I was like, I totally need this color. <laughs> I kind of think of it. It's almost like the love child of the shy blue and the forest blue. It kind of feels like it has elements of both. This is a great one for like um, a seascape. Certainly the type of water you would find more on the Suffolk coastline. So if this one is more Cornwall. This one is definitely more Suffolk. This is like the North Sea. <laughs> it's probably not even quite grey enough for the North Sea, but the North Sea on a on a day where it looks a little more blue. <laughs> that is just so lovely. I mean, obviously I love all these colors because they are my top 25 colors. So I'm gonna love them all, aren't I? Um, okay, the next one is the Daniel Smith Zoysite. Now I don't think I have it in the main palette at the moment, or do I? No, I don't. Okay, I need to go and get my greens palette. So I did have one greens palette with just gorgeous greens that I loved in it. There's kind of an addition to my main palette. Now I actually have two greens palettes. I've become so into greens. This is in my greens palette one. So we have 12 colors in here and the zoysite is this one here. So we're just gonna pre-wet that. And I want to show you these palettes properly. I did swatch this one out when I made it, um, probably in the middle of last year, but I have a second greens palette, which you might see in a moment actually, because I think there's a paint in there that I need to swatch on here. And yeah, be really interesting to swatch them all out together for you and talk about them. And maybe you can create some artwork. I'm thinking that in these videos coming up, um, I'd really like there to be some color mixing and some art creation as well as the swatching. Okay, so the zoysite is, I'm gonna to have to do this one fairly small, aren't I? Um, it, this is a beautiful gray green. And it's just nice to have a green like this in my palette that feels very natural. But again, it's a really granulating color. So it has that interesting texture as well as just being a beautiful grey green.
if you're into these muted moody colors this choice of um colors here is really for you <laughs> so there we go okay the next one is it in here as well let me just check yes it is it's the Schmincke Horridan Perylene Green. I love Perylene Green as a colour. Um, I have two different Perylene Greens. One is Roman Schmall and um, obviously this Schmincke one. Both of them are really nice. So just, I would say, go with whichever one you, you can get your hands on if you're looking for a Perylene Green. I mean, I know that most manufacturers will make a perylene green. I haven't tried them all, so I can't comment on the others. But yeah, it's almost black in mass tone. And when you add water, this beautiful dark green. So you're going to see some lighter and brighter greens in a moment too. There are so many greens I could have included in my favourites. Um, I basically chose the ones I did because I do feel like they feel very much like Natasha greens. But um, I have so many greens. Obviously, as you can tell, I have two greens palettes now. <laughs> I have so many greens I love. And there are so many I could have included, really. It's very, very hard to choose your ultimate favourites and um, I told my patrons that it made me feel really sad for the watercolours I didn't choose that didn't make it into the favourites it was like I felt like I'm really being disloyal to them and uh, I know that sounds really really silly but I do feel like that I don't want to hurt their feelings because Obviously, I love all my colours. It's just that some really speak to me more than others. So the next one is an interesting green because it's actually a grey. It's called Davies Grey, but honestly, it doesn't look grey at all to me. It looks green. I'll do a little swatch of it in here. I'm having to fit quite a few on this row to fit them in. Um, but yeah, this does not look grey to me this looks green and it's quite a natural sort of earthy green i would say another one that's kind of similar to this that i have that i also love is the winter and newton professional watercolor tear vert um that's a lovely green if you're looking for a really natural one Okay, so moving over to the left here again, we're going to swatch the Schmink Horridan Haze Pink. This is one of my newer watercolours. This came in a set that Dominic bought for me at Christmas. And um, this was one of the standout colours for me in that set. So this is an interesting colour separating paint. I think this is going to have to be a longer pebble, isn't it? I've been noticing in the comments that some of you are telling me that you've started swatching in this style now as well. And I'm really, really happy about that because I do think it's a really enjoyable way of testing your colours and playing with your paints and getting to know them a little bit better. I just got a little bit tired of swatching in the traditional rectangles. I mean, they look nice too, but this is kind of fun to do it a different way. So it makes a great pebble color because it's separating out into the two different pigments it has in it which are PR233 and PB36 so it has a red and a blue pigment and these really separate out when you add water just it's such a beautiful color so this is another super interesting color this is Roman Schmall's shadow violet and you'll see what happens to this one 
after a while. So when you first put the paint on the page, it just looks like it's going to be a kind of grey, violet kind of colour, maybe quite blue. But then we add water and get that moving around a bit. You'll see it start to separate. And there's another really interesting one. What I love about these kinds of paints is that you can, um, like say for example, if you're painting the sky, you need to just use this one color and it will do so many interesting things. So I'll just let that do its thing now. I'll try not to fiddle with it too much, <laughs> even though I am. So you can already see the magic is starting to happen. Okay, so the next one is Shire Grey. So another Schmink Horror Dam from the Shire set. And I just thought this was an interesting grey. I really love the Shire selection of colours. There's a very interesting yellow in that collection, which actually almost could have made it onto this list. But I had to stop somewhere. <laughs> so I decided to include the Shire Grey and the Shire Blue from that collection. I would love to hear actually in the comments below your favourite colours. Which colours could you not live without? And what do you look for in a colour? Which colours really excite you? I always love to read the comments and find out um, exactly what excites other people and what inspires other people because we're all different. I mean, we'd all put together a completely different collection of our favourite 25 paints or our top 10 or whatever it was. I know that we'd all choose different paints and I find that fascinating. I love the fact that we're all so different. I hope that this collection is inspiring some of you and that you're seeing colours here that you perhaps wouldn't have considered working with or um, perhaps you didn't think were your cup of tea, but now they are once you see them swatched. I don't know, that'd be interesting to find out actually. Okay, the next one we're going to do is Luna Blue. In some ways, this is kind of like a, a more granulating version of um, Ocean Grey above it. It's sort of a little bit similar. And I know that people say, um, well, you don't need this many colours, you can mix your own colours. And yeah, you can mix your own colours and that's brilliant. If you're somebody who really likes colour mixing, I like it to a degree, but I'm also somebody who gets inspired when I see a palette of beautiful colours just laid out and ready to use. And you know, this way I can get the same colour every time which is difficult to do when you're mixing yourself um, to get exactly the same shade each time, which obviously if you're working on a larger piece is um, quite important. You might come back to it and need the same color and then you have to try and mix it and all of that takes time. And uh, yeah, it's just different ways of working really, isn't it? So yeah, the Luna Blue is a really lovely granulating, separating colour again. You see the pigment separation there. And so the next one is a Roman Schmall paint. This is the Vivianite. So yeah, it's another, <laughs> another moody green. Don't worry, we're gonna have a bright one soon. But this is an unusual colour because it's, um, actually looks 
a little bit blue. I think it actually is called Vivianite Blue Ochre. I think that's its full name. I just refer to it as Vivianite, really. Well, that's a lovely nature colour. So if you're into landscapes and nature and florals, botanicals, this is a good colour to have. Okay, the next one is going to be the Royal Talons Rembrandt Dusk Yellow. Now, this is a new one for me and I have popped it, even though it says Dusk Yellow, I've popped it into my other greens palette because it actually looks fairly green to me. So I'm going to go and get that now. So this is my second and newest greens palette, which we'll look at in more detail in another video. But in it, I have the Rembrandt Dusk Yellow. So let's pop that there. See, it looks so dark, even though it's called Dusk Yellow, it looks really, really dark when it's in the pan. You would never know <laughs> that was a yellow. It's obviously a mix of pigments. These are mixed with, I think is a black pigment. So it's part of the same range as the dusk pink here. The dusk green also nearly made it into the top 25, but I had so many greens in this um, selection that I just thought we'll stick with the pink and the yellow. I love these dusk colors. I kind of feel like they were made for my style of painting. So yeah, it can be really dark. But also, if you add quite a bit of water, interesting greyish yellow green. I don't really know how to describe this one. It's very unusual. So the next colour is Roman Schmall's Lazurite. Now this is quite a pale colour, but I kind of feel like it's a really lovely colour if you just want a subtle blue-grey sky. It doesn't have as much strength as some of the other colours, or in fact all of the other colours. But it is so beautiful in its subtlety. I feel like this is one of these colours that won't be for everyone, but if you, if you get it, you get it. Because to me, that's beautiful. That's the perfect, slightly overcast, slightly hazy blue sky that we get here in the UK. So the next one um, is Payne's Grey. And I have many Payne's Greys because I'm a huge fan of the colour Payne's Grey. And you get so many different varieties of it. Um, it differs quite a lot depending on the brand you buy. So I've chosen two of my favourites. So I have the Winsor & Newton Professional Payne's Grey and the Daniel Smith Payne's Grey. So I'm going to swatch both of those now for you. So this is my night palette. And in here we have the Winsor & Newton Professional Payne's Grey. It's in this big pan here because I use it quite a lot. So I can't do a massive swatch of this, but look at this gorgeous colour. Wow, <laughs> it's so inky and beautiful. So I need a new word. I've said beautiful about a million times. So you can see that the Winsor & Newton version is really quite a blue Payne's Grey. Got this inky blueness to it. And I just love it. It's so, so lovely. Right, the Daniel Smith one, where have I got that? <laughs> so this top row of my night palette um, is just like Payne's greys and really dark blues. And the fourth one along is the Daniel Smith Payne's grey, so it's this one. And you'll see it's slightly different to the Winsor & Newton version. So you can already see, hopefully, <laughs> if that's coming across on camera, this has a slightly more, like, kind of like a violet type of blue, really. So this is why I have several different Payne's Greys, because 
they all are slightly different and yet they're all beautiful in their own way. Another favourite blue is the Daniel Smith Soda Light. So this is the one we're going to swatch next. I mean, I have so many dark blues in my collection of paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all slightly different and um, when you have a love of painting night landscapes like I do, they come in very, very useful. So soda light is interesting because it's really granulating. As well as being a gorgeous colour. love that. You see how the dusk yellow here is actually looking more yellow now as it's drying. So we're on to the final two and this one is the Sennelier Greenish Umber which actually looks quite like the Schmincke Horridan Forest Blue doesn't it? Again this is another colour that I feel can look quite dark when you dilute it, you get this lovely bluish green. I mean, I have other, I think I've got like a handmade green umber. I think it's green umber, I'm pretty sure it is. Is it raw green umber, something like that paint? And it doesn't look anywhere near as green as this one. It's just so pretty. I mean, that is very, very similar to the forest blue, certainly at this stage, but we'll wait until it's dry and then we'll have a closer look. Some of them do change quite a lot when they're drying. So we're on to the final one of my 25 favourites now, and this is the Mary Blue Green Gold. Green gold has been recommended to me so many times. Um, and then this was one I had, I think, on a dot card and I swatched it out and just really loved the colour. So here we are. We've got something bright <laughs> to end on. This is just the most gorgeous green gold. And I kind of like how it contrasts with these other colours in my top 25. So we're going to let those dry now and then I'll come back and I'll hold them up to the camera so you can have a really good look at them. <laughs> 